Hi, my name's Jeremy. This is Red Means Recording. And today I want to talk about something that I get asked about a lot, which are the visualizers at the end of my videos when I have like a piece of music that I've made or something like that. I'll have a visualizer at the end and I've used a bunch of different ones and I get questions about them all the time. So this is a uh, little video about the visualizers that I use, what they're like to use, uh, kind of like what the render time is, stuff like that. Yeah. So I'm just going to walk you through a vi few visualizers. I've had a few beers, you know, we'll be fine. It's great. Let's, uh, let's get going. Okay, so this is the computer that we're going to be using for this. It is a uh, Trashcan Mac Pro with the specs that you see on here. If you want to pause and look at that, go for it. It's a pretty decent machine, but not amazing. I get all of my visualizer templates from videohive.net. Uh, if you search for After Effects visualizer things, you can find them there. Um, the first one we're going to be looking at is this Trapwix one. Uh, you can see all the little demos here, little things, little pictures. So pretty, right? Um, you need to make sure when you're doing this stuff that you check the plugin requirements. So this one actually needs trap code particular and sound keys, and also check the compatibility of your version of After Effects. All of these are going to be using After Effects, so make sure you check that. And if you press play on the website, you can see little preview things. There's usually dubstep involved. This one's no different. It's dubstep, dub, dub, whoop, whoop, whoop. Okay, now we're in After Effects. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is open up the visualizer. There are gonna be a couple different versions of it for this particular project. Uh, there's like different shape things that you can use, simple shapes, fader shapes, or 3D shapes. Gonna find the version that's closest to the version of After Effects we're using. I'm using 2017, so I'm gonna open the CC 2014 version of this. And once the template's open, you're gonna have a bunch of comps that you can edit. You can kind of see here that there's all these like placeholder media things that are orange. So we're going to dive into the editable comps by looking over here. First thing I'm going to do is import my logo as a PSD. I've made a logo that is round. Um, and then we're going to grab some videos from Beeple. Uh, Beeple is an amazing CG artist who is uh, giving away a lot of stuff all the time. And he has a bunch of VJ loops that you can grab. And um, they're all on Vimeo and they're all downloadable and they're all under Creative Commons. So yeah, look at that thing. Wow. It's just so cool. Look at it go. Um, you're gonna hit download and I'm gonna download it in its original format. I'll put a link to this in the description so that you can enjoy Beeple. Um, I'm actually just gonna import all of these so that I have a bunch to choose from. I have a bunch of them downloaded already. There they go. I'm gonna put them into a folder. Good to stay organized, it's called Beeple. Yeah, yeah. All right. So uh, the first thing is going to these editable comps. Um, each template sort of has its own thing going on. This one has a couple different backgrounds and we're just gonna drop a video file in there. And you're like, well, that looks weird. So just scale it up. Yeah, okay. The other thing I need to do is I need to loop this video and you can do this by right clicking on the video and interpret footage in main and you can go down and uh, you can say loop for as many times as you want. And there it's looped, it's long. Yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna go into these other two editable comps that include uh, like a foreground additional thing and a background additional thing. And I'm gonna do the same thing, interpret footage main and uh, loop it down here. Now I have a big loop of that footage, beautiful. I'm gonna scale it up so it fits into this comp properly in a second, I'm assuming. Yeah, there we go, all right. Go to the other one, pick another piece of footage and scale that up, yeah, yeah. Beautiful. Okay, so now I'm gonna put my logo into this comp that says logos. I'm gonna get rid of that one. I'm gonna scale this up a little bit. It's beautiful, I love it. And now I'm gonna grab my music track and I'm gonna drop it in the pre-comp called music. Um, I just did that, there we go. I'm gonna drag this marker over here that says music end time. I'm gonna take note of that music end time and I'm gonna go to all my major comps and I'm going to make sure that they end at the same time. So that way everything is, you know, ending at the same time. That's the point of that. Also, it uses it as the uh, the timer, like there's a little like countdown thing. So it uses that endpoint as the, uh, the timer for that. So once we've gotten everything in there, you can see that this template has created this crazy looking thing out of all those pieces of footage in our logo that we dropped in. I'm gonna customize my uh, track name at the top there, make sure it's centered. And then I'm going to make sure that this thing is reactive to the sound. And this uses trap code sound keys, which you're gonna see in just a second. Give it to me. Yeah, there it is. Okay, so on screen, Sound Keys is getting uh, from the music this frequency spectrum, and there are three zones which you can see represented on the right. And those little boxes on the screen are also zones. So I can adjust the 
points for these zones by moving them around like this. And depending on where the zone is, it will respond to the frequency differently. And these responses are what are going to uh, help generate keyframes for all of the animations in this thing. This is one of the more complex uh, uh, templates that I've used. So um, a lot of them don't use sound keys, um, but this one just does. So I'm showing off kind of like what that kind of tool could do. So after you've moved things around and changed the settings like that, you can hit apply. It takes a long time and then your animation has uh, sound keys to it and it will like bounce around to the animation. It takes a long time to render each frame here. Uh, I am at full resolution right now in After Effects and you can see just how long it's chugging on each individual frame. It's pretty crazy. Uh, but the result is arguably, you know, very cool. So that's kind of your trade off. So we're gonna hit render on this thing and we're gonna take a look at how long it's gonna take to render. The number is four hours and a time that is actually going up. Uh, okay. Oh, wait, we went down. All right, anyways, that's this one. Uh, it's a long time to render. Let's let's move on to the next one and see what happens. So this is one I've used a whole bunch for OP1 videos at the end, this Audio React Tunnel one. Uh, I don't think it requires any special plugins. It's got this cool uh, thing that you're seeing on screen there where it's like, makes it easy to, to set it up and I'll show you how that works. Um, and that's kind of what it looks like at the end. And you can see that there's different options for it. So that's, that's pretty cool. Okay, so the thing with this one is, um, you actually are going to run a script file and it's going to set it up all for you. And then you can mess with the settings from there. So we're going to import our music and our logo. So I'm going to enter my track name and my artist name. Uh huh. Good job. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm going to grab my logo like I did from the last one. I'm going to uh, hit refresh real quick so it knows my logo's there. There we go. And I'm going to pick my logo. And then I'm just gonna hit the button that says do the thing. It's going to use the built-in uh, After Effects audio analyzer to generate keyframes from the audio. And it's gonna create all these comps for us. It's actually also gonna add it to the render queue as well, which is pretty badass. And uh, yeah, there we go. It did all that stuff. Uh, yeah, and it's telling us that we can customize the, the things. Okay, so I could just hit render from here, but I'm not. I'm going to show you the rest of the color schemes that are just presets. Some of them are cooler than others. Um, but if you go down to the bottom there, you can also choose custom colors and go through and customize all the colors and flares and all that kind of stuff in this template, which is pretty, pretty cool. Um, what am I looking at? Oh yeah, I can uh, change things like the reactive. And I found with this one, actually, if you drop the audio level max, you get more circles like that, which is pretty cool. Uh, it changes sort of like how much it reacts to the audio and makes those, those uh, flying circle things happen more. That's the real technical explanation for it. I hope you enjoyed that. So I'm just kind of going through and spot checking um, how it looks over a few frames. And if I'm happy with it, I can hit render. Let's see how long this one's gonna take. 10 hours. Ten, 10 hours. Okay, let's go on down a little faster, but still, that's kind of ridiculous. Let's go on to the next one. This is, too, this is too long. Okay, here's the one that I used for the Lucy Swan remix. Yeah, pretty much exactly like that. So this one also uses um, trap code plugins. I think it uses trap code form and optical flares, and uh, you will need to have those installed. They're pretty cool plugins, so you might want to check them out anyways. So this one is even easier to set up in a way, because I think you just literally drop your music in and change the title and you're pretty much ready to go. So there's my music. I'm going to extend the length of the comp to uh, fit the music in there and take note of the time so that my main comp is going to be the same amount of time. All right, so this is the full HD render now uh, that I'm in, and I have to also make sure that that one is the right length. I'm going to focus in on this comp right now. Okay, so if I go into the middle of this, I will see that there is indeed some audio reaction going on. And I found this one's actually pretty easy to just get a decent result from. I don't have to mess with the settings on it that much. Um, I am gonna go ahead and change the, uh, the title of the thing. So, it's a little strange. You have to like type it in down here and then copy and paste it into the top. And I'm not really sure why, but you know, it is what it is. There we go. All right, copy paste. Now this title revolves around and 
what I notice is that unless you change a setting, it will stop revolving around. It's not like the other template where like, if you set a uh, an endpoint, it will automatically do the thing. So you actually have to go into the song duration up in the audio react setup layer, which is all the controls for it and drag it to the um, arbitrary, oh, it's not arbitrary, it's seconds. Just drag it out to the seconds that your song is. I just dragged it out all the way because I don't ever want that thing to stop spinning. So now I'm double checking that my title spins around and it does, it's beautiful, look at that. And uh, yeah, I'm just showing some of the other settings you can mess with. The XTK can make things wobbly more if you want. Let's see how long this one's gonna take. It's 11 hours. 11 hours I'm gonna have to wait for this thing. Maybe 10, I don't know. It's, again, too long. Let's try this one instead. This is another one with the um, the setup script. So uh, I'm gonna show this one off just because I wanna show you what it looks like when you uh, customize the colors a little bit more. Um, if you've seen, you've probably seen this one. I've used it for OP1 videos as well. Thank you. All right, so as before, we're going to uh, import our music and our logo, and we're going to run the script. It's the it's the After Effects scripting language. Um, it's actually a pretty clever way to use it in this case. So scripts, run script file. The script is included in the base directory of the project. Okay, uh, we did all the things like music name, we pick our logo, great. Let's change our name to, to ma magic. OP1 mix. Uh, if you can't tell, I'm recording this video after I recorded the screencast. It's just, I don't have time to do everything at once sometimes. All right, we're analyzing the audio. Great. Okay, there it is. As you can see, this one has the album art in the corner as opposed to my logo, which is pretty neat. And it looks pretty good. Um, there's some different uh, color schemes. They're not bad. Uh, let's do some custom colors, I guess. Okay, yeah. Uh, actually, kind of looks kind of cool, black and white, but no. We're going to pick colors with the picker from our album cover right there and uh, kind of get a theme going on. That's No, that was a bad idea. You should change that back. Something darker. There we go. That's pretty cool. Um, yeah, you can see you can change the flare color too. I can uh, turn it down a little bit if I want. I can increase the chromatic aberration until it gets absolutely batshit insane, which is what you're seeing right there. Uh, I'm trying to now hit it down to a more usable level. Just a little bit. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Okay, great. Great. And uh, yeah, you can mess with spin and stuff like that. So at that point, you double check that your uh, thing is all ready to go. You hit render and survey says timing five hours and 57 minutes. That's not terrible. It's definitely not 11 hours like some of the other ones. Um, but yeah, it's still a long time. All of these are going to be pretty intensive. Um, you can use the render garden script if you want to, to speed up things. If you have a multi-core machine, helps a lot. Uh, but yeah, check links for the description for all these visualizers. If you have After Effects and a decent machine, you too can look exactly like me for some reason if you wanted to. Anyways, Jeremy, Red Means Recording. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Yeah.